Hello students, welcome back to the multimedia course. So this is our second lecture on sound. So first of all, we will review what we have done in the previous lecture and then we will talk about digitizing the sound, how we can do that. The main points include the sampling, quantization, bit rate and the file size. So explain the process of distinguishing sounds, including the sample rates, how we can differentiate between different sounds based on the sample rates, bit depth, bit rate, channels and their impact on the quality. And as well as at the end, based on all those information, how we can calculate the size of the <coughs> audio file. So first thing is review. So as you know that uh, in the last lecture we discussed different uh, properties of the sound. We have frequency, we have wavelength and then we also have the amplitude that is more equal to the volume of the sound. Okay and then we talk about that the human ear is capable of detecting the 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. That is the normal range of frequency that a human being can listen or the human ear can listen. Most sound vibrates in the complex ways often involving the combination of different frequencies and then we also looked at how different type of frequencies when they are traveling in the same medium when there is an, a lot of interference we have two type of interference one is the constructive and the other one is the destructive and how we can plot that particular specific sound wave <coughs> against the time okay so that's give us the sine sine wave graph the first thing is uh, i mean today we'll be talking about digitization of the sound uh, if you look at uh, our sound sound is a continuous or analog signal it has infinite values but definitely when we talk about the digital world we need to quantize those we cannot have the infinite values so we need to make them into some form of a finite form limited amount of information that we can save in the computer world or the digital world so given the evident com complexity of the acoustical signal so the sound signal it would be naive to believe that analog or the digital anal, uh, technologies are sufficiently advanced to capture fully and convey the complete listening experience so one thing is certain at best what with the most sophisticated technology what we hear being reproduced through an audio system is an approximation of the actual sound it means that we are not listening the real sound we are listening or we hear the approximation of the real sound so digitization is and the quantization are the two main uh, process which we are involved in the digitizing the sound okay so these process is similar to the used to create the digital images huh? remember that we have different colors colors we have the visual effects and then we need to digitize we need to sample part of that scene that we see with our eyes and then based on that uh, information that we are uh, sample that we have stored in the digital world we reproduce that particular specific image which is again an approximation of the real scene however instead of the light waves we, here we have focused on the sound waves now we talk about the sound waves not the light waves the image insists uh, an image consists of the combination of different colors and here for each pixel now here we sound consists of combination of different amplitudes there we have the color information here we have the amplitude information at different point in time so what we are going to sample here what is the amplitude what is the position of that particular specific specific wave that we are going to sample in our sound wave graph so increasing, uh, increasingly digital audio, especially music is stored in the files can be manipulated like other data. So I mean, digital audio is stored in the files that can be manipulated. We, we need to manipulate, we need to process it. Okay, so we need to save that in specific file format, just like in the images, we have different formats. Similarly, in the sound, we also have different formats. Almost always digital audio is a compressed form. So there we have the bitmap images which are uncompressed data but when we talk about the sounds most of the time or most 
always it is a compressed form of the data not the raw data interestingly modern uh, modern digital audio formats are heavily influenced by the cd format compact disc format the sampling rate and the number of the quantization levels used for the high quality digital audio is almost always the same as the that use of the compact disc format so this is a specific format which is used to save the soundtracks on the CDs or the compact discs okay so we are following more or less the same guidelines which are used in the compact disc or the CDs so digital audios aim to closely produce reproduce original sounds as a sampling rate must be choosing uh, must be chosen that will pre preserve at least the full range of audible frequencies what do you mean a full range of audible frequencies i mean we in as as i told you that multiple frequencies in one in natural sound waves we have multiple frequencies which are uh, interfering with each other so we need to try to select a sampling rate which is trying to cover all those uh, different type of frequencies inside our uh, sound wave or the sound sound signal if the limit of the human eye ear is 40 uh, 20000 hertz a minimum of the 40000 samples are required so we have a nyquist and shannon they are the two uh, what you can say that the scientists which came up with a specific theorem that i mean of course i mean you are looking at a very crucial math but we don't forget about i mean don't worry about that math so simple is that if we have a wavelength two samples in one particular specific wavelength what does it mean 20 hertz mean that we are producing 20 waves in one second so if we talk about 20 waves in one second we have 20 waves and we want to take two samples in each wave so we have 2 multiplied by 4, 20 so that become 40 samples in one second and similarly when we talk about here so we are saying that if we have 20,000 Hertz that is the frequency and for it means that we are producing 20,000 waves in one second okay so when we say that 20,000 waves in one second and each wave will have, we need to make two samples that is the minimum to show some uh, reasonable quality of the sound so 2 multiplied by 20 so that become 40 Hertz it means that we need to take 40 samples in one second 40,000 samples in one second so this is um, the sampling rate for the CDs is 44,000.1 kilohertz so I mean they are taking the 41 44,100 uh, samples in one particular specific setting that is the standard for the compact discs so if we talk about the maximum frequency then it covers more than that that is required to sample uh, or produce a reasonable quality of the sound okay so that's based on the iQuest and the Shannon sampling theorem so uh, we need to understand what is a sampling mean for example if we look at that on the first picture from the left that is the actual sound wave it's a continuous data and because we cannot have the continuous data which contains the infinite number of values so we cannot save them in the digital world so what we need to do we need to sample for example if we look at that we have like in this one particular wavelength we have around well, how many samples one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so we have ten different samples okay so we have 10 samples or we can increase the number of samples so definitely this particular last graph on the right side it will produce more accurate approximation of the sound as compared to this one okay so the more samples the smoother the wave and the smoother the wave means we are accurately reproducing the sound we are more near to the actual sound if we are taking more samples so more the sample the good quality we can achieve with the word sound insufficient samples rate uh, or the under sampling I mean if we say that just like uh, the Nyquist theorem if we are taking two two uh, samples each wave this is one particular wave and we are taking two samples then definitely if we look at that it is not producing the as accurate sound 
uh, it will not re be able to reproduce. So this is the this phenomenon is called the undersampling, and it produces aliasing. For example, aliasing mean that this with the same sample that this black point that we have taken. So we have we can represent the multiple sound. We can produce the multiple sounds. So that is something like aliasing the same same sample but it can produce different sounds so when it is can produce different sounds so this specific phenomena is called aliasing I mean having same uh, name but for the different people or different frequency sounds similarly if we talk about samples if we talk about uh, this is the original uh, we take the 10 samples it means that we are taking these 10 samples and in that particular specific sound or we can look at that so it is not i mean if you look at the original one it is not the real or the approximation of the original sound so we can increase the number of sam samples so now we are taking 20 samples in that particular specific sound and if we try to having those so now you can see that uh, our original is more I mean it's still we have some variations some deviations from the original sound but it is still more or less producing which is more near to the actual sound so if we increase the number of sample sounds sample of the uh, in the wave or in the sample in per second then definitely it will that particular approximation of our sound or the sample or the digitized sound will be more closer to the original sample original uh, original sound original wave quantization the first is we say that we are taking samples samples mean that how we are going to quantize those things i mean we need to have some specific value so the for analog to digital conversion the number of quantization level is usually chosen to fit into the convenient number of bits how many bits are required what what specific number we are going to assign it for sound the most common size is 16 bits 16 bits number I mean two bytes we are going to use as used for the CD so which allows 65,536 quantization levels for example quantization mean if we talk look at that what is the amplitude here it should be a number here what is the amplitude at this particular point it should be a number here so I mean we have we can we can have plus and minus totals of 65 so we can say that around 32,000 um, yeah 32,000 33,000 are on the positive side 33,000 on the negative side so we have that kind of possible values for our sampling values okay so if so that is the quantization issues so for each sample will be used between 0 and 65,536 different values the quantization level for the audio bit where audio is equal to bit depth so quantization levels how many bits we are requiring it is in number bit depth uh, how many 16 bits or 8 bits or 4 bits or I mean, if we're talking about 16 bits 65,000 different values we can save but if we talk about 8 bits only 256 values can be saved so of course we need to do some approximation to match it with the real sound value so that will be uh, the the quality of the sound is going down as compared to if we are using the 16 bit which is a bigger if, if it give us a bigger scale of values and then we can uh, do the more accurate approximation of the real actual sound so the amount of data stored per sample hmm, per sample 16 or 8 bit number of bits that we are going to save for each sample the higher the bit depth the smoother the wave if we have the high number of bit depths it means that we are using the more bits to save the data we have more uh, values of uh, range of values that we can assign to the amplitude of the sound it means that we will be able to produce more smoother or more better approximation of the actual sound the smoother the wave the more accurate the reproduction reproduce to the sound just like we are saying that if we have more number of samples we can save more information we can produce a more smooth curve and it will produce a more higher quality of the approximation of our sound the same thing is here higher the number of bits or higher the bit depth we can have a more smoother and more accurate 
accurate accurate approximation of the sound wave so again bit depth if we are talking about the 8 bit quantization 8 quantization level so you can imagine that we have this so again uh, the actual sound here it is passing through the actual sound passing through the actual sound there's a little bit deviation here but here we don't have something here we, we either we can approximate it to this one or we can approximate it to this to the lower point upper point or lower point and then we need to see that it is more closer to the lower point so we approximate it to the lower point similarly if you can see that so these are these different deviations from the actual point if we have more values that we can save then of course we will have more near to the actual um, sound wave similarly if we have 16 quantization levels then it will become more near to the actual sound so we can imagine that more higher the bit depth higher the uh, quality of the sound so we have uncompressed bit rates uncompressed because we are saying that how many bits we are using in that particular one sample how many samples we are taking and how many channels we have more uh, we have uh, mono one channel or stereo two channels i mean we are how many channels of information we are saving it okay so again number of channels multiplied by the number of samples that we are taking in one second and what is the uh, how many bits we are using to save the one particular specific sample rate so sample so it will give us the uncompressed size of the uh, uh, size so if we talk about a cd bit rate we have a 16 that is the num bit depth the 16 bits we are using to say record one sample how many samples in one second it's 44,100 and then in the stereo we have two different type of um, channels so when we multiply together it will become 100 okay it's like 1411,000 kilo 11,000 bits per second so similarly we have uh, mp3 or wma and other compressed audio files types can have the same bit depth and same sample rate and the channels as the cd however this information is compressed in the mp3 or the wma the informations are compressed thus the results is a smaller bit rate that is more kind of a 128 instead of having 1411 kilobyte we are having 128 kilobyte or 192 kilobytes per second so because of the compression the number of bits per second they have been down okay so <clears throat> this is the on the bit size again if we talk about the file size so we know that what is a bit rate multiply by the length in second so what is a bit rate bit rate is actually the answer of this particular specific formula this is a bit rate so i mean how many bits how many uh, what you can say the how many uh, bytes we are using in one particular specific second and then we can file size i mean what is the size of that particular specific length I mean we are having 60 seconds or 300 seconds or 400 seconds that is length of the sound wave okay or this soundtrack you can say that so what is the length of that particular specific uh, soundtrack in seconds divided by 8 because this particular bit rate is in the bits so we need to find out the information in the byte so we need to divide it by byte okay so that similarly if we talk about the in the CD so if we have this is our bit rate okay and then if we say that we have a 4200 seconds and divided by 8 and they will give us the 700 megabits megabytes approximately uh, 70 minutes sound okay so that is all for today uh, we can explain what is the sample rate what is the bit depth what is a bit rate what are different channels mono or stereo and what is impact on the quality and how we can calculate the size so this is the uh, topics these are the things that we have covered in this lecture i hope you have enjoyed it thank you very much bye